a.m. I am walking through the streets of Oviedo to make it out to the Camino Primitivo. And there are two actual Caminos here in Oviedo, so you need to be watchful of where you're going so you don't get on the wrong Camino. I'm going to be walking to Grado, which is about 28 kilometers away. The forecast actually called for clouds and rain. It definitely doesn't look like that to me. I absolutely love these early morning fogs. They add so much to the ambience and it really feels pretty mysterious. just past the halfway mark to Grado and so far it's been a really nice walk because the fog has lifted which I loved but also because the sun is out and it was supposed to be a rainy day today. an early day once again. It's 7 a.m. I'm walking through Grado. And the reason I'm leaving so early this morning is because like five or six people got up at 5.30 to get an early start at the albergue. And it was the Donativo albergue here in Grado. That was nice, but the paid one was way, way, way better than the Donativo. It was in an old, beautiful house. I was actually just too lazy to go check it out. But yeah, everybody got up super early and started running out. I don't know why, because it's still dark, but I'm looking for a coffee shop right now and it doesn't look very good. So I might get my coffee in the next town. Today, the first eight kilometers out of Salas are all uphill. I actually do love these early mornings where it's really strenuous at the beginning. So I'm on this uphill section and not only is it kind of dark because it's a little valley and the sun is still rising, but it's also rather cold this morning. I feel so much better to be in boots on surfaces like this because you got much more traction than with sneakers. I especially like it because I can finally use fancy boots that I bought for this Camino because on the Camino del Norte there's literally no use for them. We have our usual cows and we're back to seeing windmills again like on the Camino Frances. And as we come down, we have a very picturesque village 
and a beautiful little valley. So I arrived in Tineo. I'm in the albergue. This one's a bit nicer because it's a bit fancier. This one has little lockers where you can put in your backpack. And the nice thing about this one is, here you can see it has a little light and a plug so you can charge your phone. And this albergue here is 12 euros plus one euro for the fantastic sheet. It is 8 a.m. And I'm just leaving Tineo after having a nice coffee at the Bar de la Plata. And then that's the hostel, the yellow building where I started, which is very, very, very good. Even though there's a really fancy one here that is inside a four-star hotel. But that one is brand new, renovated, and it's really, really good. So now I'm heading up towards the Camino, and then I'm going to Pola de Allende, I think it's called today which is about 27 kilometers. It was supposed to rain, and that's why I'm leaving a bit later, but there's not one, one drop. So it finally started to rain. Not really rain, but drizzle heavily. So I finally got to wear my poncho again, and it's supposed to be like this most of the day. Muddy trails, which I'm gonna try to navigate around. But it's still beautiful. And the one thing I've noticed whenever you put on a poncho, minutes later, it stops raining. for today. The sun has finally shown its face. It's kind of rainy but it's really 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 pretty. The trail is rather muddy still from yesterday the day before it was rain but this punch is great because it has a front zipper and it makes it very easy to put on unlike the ones that are one piece of clothes in front this thing you can just put it on your backpack then put on your backpack and just close it up front as opposed to trying to throw it over your head and all kinds of crazy things I heard of somebody who took 15 minutes to put on their poncho the other day because they were struggling alone with getting it on. But weather-wise, it's nice and cool so you don't sweat that much. And with the rain and everything, it feels a lot like the winter walk on the Camino Frances. We're just getting down to where you can see Pola de Allende. Just looking at my watch and it says 32.7. And the road sign says 33. Going to a hotel I booked. It's only 30 euros, but you get breakfast and they have an amazing peregrino menu. I'm leaving Polo de Allende, heading up the hill. It's supposed to be an eight, eight or nine kilometer climb of a thousand feet or a thousand meters, but so. I'm about halfway up my climb here to the top somewhere up there, but it's absolutely stunningly beautiful.
now it's 7.45 a.m. I'm just leaving Berbucedo, I think that's the way you say it. It's kind of a drizzly morning, but it's not really raining. And it's only like 15 kilometers, but it's up and downhill once again. But the countryside is beautiful and it looks like it's clearing up. So it should be a decent walk today. Once again, it's more little trails than asphalt. So I'm very happy. It's been drizzling this morning, at least when I came out. So I'm wearing much more than I would like to because I like to go out as light as possible, possibly just in a t-shirt because then you don't have to stop and take off all your clothes. So I put my rain cover on my backpack, took a rain jacket, and I'm wearing a second layer because it was kind of cold. And the last few days have been tricky because when you take off your layers and you're in a t-shirt, you get cold. But if you have the extra layer on, you get hot. So it's been that strange kind of temperature where it's really tricky to get it right. One of the ass. One of the ass. Oops. Wait for that. For that. For that. I just took off two layers. My rain jacket and my sweater and I'm in a long sleeve t-shirt so hopefully that will be good enough to keep me warm because yesterday I just had a t-shirt and my arms kept on getting cold because the winds are really chilly out here down in the valley there in bed with two and it is kind of cloudy behind us but up ahead of us it's pretty clear the windmills in the back there well those are the same windmills we saw when you're coming down the hill you know a long slog up here but there was a cafe at the bottom so i had a bocadillo and a coffee so it makes things better stretch here to get under this desaline. It's been a beautiful walk already. It was a lot of downhill which is really tough on the knees and as you can see right through the trees and run this desaline. The little museum is actually incredibly good for a small village. It would be great for a big city too. For one euro is 50 or whatever it costs definitely go see it and take your time because there are three big houses that have tons and tons of stuff in it it's really worth the visit it is 7 30 a.m i'm just leaving grande cesarin to fonsagrada not fonsagrada p but with an f fonsagrada it's a 25 kilometer walk um, going slightly uphill all the way so it should be a nice walk it's nice and chilly this morning it's going to be absolutely perfect weather We're all the way up the hill again, right next to the windmills. You might actually be able to hear them. But it's kind of been like on the Camino Frances yesterday and today. We've always been heading towards the windmills on the top of the hill. Another windmills we passed yesterday are way beyond on the horizon there. And I'm just about at the top of the mountain. We're 
just about there. It's 26 to Grandes de Salina and only two to Fonsagrada. So it's in 28 kilometers. It's early morning here in Fonsagrada. It's 7.40 a.m. The walk in here yesterday wasn't the most interesting. And the last kilometer coming up the hill was definitely a killer. Today it's again 25 or so, but it's supposed to be up and downhill. It's been a really, really foggy morning. Um, but the good thing is, seeing it's foggy, it's not windy. And also, it's been nice and warm. So I'm in my t-shirt. I've got my poncho on the ready on my backpack. So I can just flip it on in case it starts raining. But it's looking better. This morning it's pitch black outside and I'm wearing my headlamp because uh, I got a super early start. Most of the people in the Berga got up super early. There's one guy, he gets up at 5.30 and he was in my dorm room. So um, it's around 30 kilometers. But it should be um, a pretty easy walk into Lugo today. But if you leave very early and it's really dark, you could kind of screw up and go down the wrong track. Once again, we just follow the arrow. So it's been a very pleasant walk this morning. 
mostly it's been on little trails like this. It was supposed to rain, but it didn't. And it's just been foggy and pleasant. And the temperature has been really, really nice. And we've been coming through some really nice little villages, stone villages, as you could see before. They're really impressive what they do with the stonework here in Galicia. And the Camino has been very well marked. And here's a horse. It's a great nation. And once again, there's a marker. They have these markers everywhere. Oh, the horse is walking along. Looks like I got lucky with the weather today because those rainstorms actually happened right here in this forest where I'm going through now because it's soaking wet on the floor but I never got any rain so it's been quite lucky I never had to use my poncho I put it back but I always find that too whenever I pull out my poncho ahead of time the rain seemed to never hit me and they hit somewhere else I decided to take the day off because yesterday upon coming into Lugo and seeing the old town, I decided it would be a good idea to take it easy. Give my Lugo itself is a beautiful city, got a beautiful old center, beautiful cathedral. So definitely plan on spending some extra time here. Get in early and spend some extra time. It's a good day because I'm on the Camino. Just made it out of the Lugo sort of city area and are now on our way out to Ferreira, which is 24 kilometers, but I'm going to keep on going today because I want to make up some time. Awesome. I'm going to make up some kilometers today by going a bit longer so that I can get to Santiago in three days. But it's been a pleasant walk out. Uh, two really nice areas crossing a nice old bridge and no industrial area which is pretty amazing because normally there's always an industrial area and we're walking next to the road on a little path which isn't too bad because that keeps us off from the traffic but there are lots of pilgrims on the road ahead of me i counted seven or eight pilgrims so far so even though i thought this primitivo would be less full of people. There are more pilgrims in the north there. But I've done like seven kilometers so far. It's 9.15. So I'm on a pretty good pace. kilometers outside of Lugo and just walk past this beautiful beautiful church in this little town I don't know the name so I wasn't paying attention but it's been really pretty again and these little towns sometimes are just absolutely stunning with we're finally getting to see the Galician Oriol
my head on, on so I don't trip over a rock or something. And also so I can spot the marker. And we make it out. There's one. I'm heading in the right direction. I'm on the Camino now to Arswa, another 14 kilometers. Buenas. Buenas. It's going to be a bit more busy. The closer you get to Santiago, the busier it gets. Because a lot of people start in Sadia and do the 113 kilometers from Sadia to get to Compostela. It turned out to be a beautiful day once again. Perfect hiking weather. Just cool enough that you don't sweat. Uh, pretty much perfect cloudy day with just enough clouds to keep you from getting overly heated and so today instead of stopping for pulpo as i actually had planned i am having the bocadillo de queso on the go and i arrived in melita way too early for the pulpo place so i'm just carrying on And on this particular stretch, I just noticed there was a bend off. There were two different Caminos. And the last time I came down this exact stretch, there was so much water in the stream that you couldn't go past it. So I had to backtrack and go down the longer way. But now, the perfect weather this time. And no worries about the stream. when I walked through here they were just having the biggest rains they've ever had in like 30 years all oh, that was green it was water we can have a beautiful little crossing here and there's a beautiful albergue here it's a municipal it's really really nice Normally, I am one of the last to leave the albergue. Today, I was the first. And it's a very different attitude. And you can see the way people are walking and stuff that they've just started in Sarria, which is the closest point from Santiago that you can still get your credencial that says you've walked the Camino de Santiago. This is a final sort of stretch before Opelidusa. I just had a quick snack break and I'm now 15 kilometers from Santiago. So about three hours left the Camino. It's been really a strange day. It wasn't supposed to rain according to the weather forecast and it's been raining, drizzling and everything in between and now it's sort of sunny. So you never really know how it's going to be but I've been using my umbrella. Didn't put on my poncho today yet. 
because I know that as soon as I put on my poncho, I have to take it off. But we're going on a final stretch uphill here, and then sooner or later, we should be seeing Santiago in the distance. The little dog walked all the way from Barcelona, which is pretty impressive. I'm at the end of my Camino Primitivo walk and just about at the cathedral, walking through the streets. The sun is coming in and out and it's just been amazing. I'm just sitting here watching the other pilgrims arrive. Everybody's super excited from their walk. I highly recommend the Camino Primitivo. You can do it in 12 to 14 days. It's 320 or 330 kilometers of spectacular landscape. It is a bit more difficult than the other Caminos. You go up and downhill much more, and it's not as much asphalt as the Camino del Norte, so I really enjoyed that part a lot. And if you like this video, please subscribe below. And if you want to see my other videos, click on either one of these videos.